us without knowing just throw the peace on tell them good vibes only yeah they were hating but we didn't even notice cause we're on them good vibes only what comes from the struggles we endure in life i am sure in your mind in the moment of you're enduring the pains of your own struggle you feel nothing but the misery in the midst of your of what you're experiencing this thought form and feeling within the caverns of the darkness of this darkness it is far from the truth of what is really happening it's actually strength that comes from the struggles that we experience it's the moment that we learn to see our struggles as opportunities to become stronger better and wiser it's then when our thinking shifts from what we thought from i can't do this to i must do this Struggle is something many have tried to avoid, yet facing it is inevitable. We all face struggles in life, and it's how we deal with these struggles that define us as individuals. Some may wallow in the misery of it all, as it's really easy to do. Some find the strength to pick themselves up and move on. And the third group of people, those who have learned from their struggles and have used them to become wiser and better versions of themselves. I know for those that are still dealing with their struggles currently don't see this as our mind and our emotions are within the clouds of confusion and despair. It is essential to understand that wisdom comes from knowledge and experience. It's the knowledge that is understanding what you should be doing in the given situation and experience is actually doing it. It is only through a combination of the two that we can achieve true wisdom through adversity. It is what you choose to do with your struggles that says a lot about who you are. Everyone struggles in life. But this isn't something that everyone accepts. It's the struggles that we go through. If they didn't exist, we would have no way to appreciate the beauty and the wonders of life. And as much as we would like a world without struggle, as life consists of a perfect balance between light and darkness in this life happiness and joy can't exist without the struggle and pain whether we wish to understand what we go through in our experience the hardest thing is to grasp is that struggle is an opportunity for growth it might hurt but you can always use your struggles to learn something from it we can use it as a stepping stone to learn and rise above our struggles and when we are in the midst of struggle in life, you always have a choice that you can either dwell on it and let it get the best of you, or we can you wind up using it as a stepping stone to become stronger. It might be painful, but it's also teaching us a lot about courage and strength. It may not make sense at the moment. Just know that everything does happen for a reason and no matter how screwed up the situation may seem, it may not be a reason that we comprehend at the time, but it's still nonetheless a reason. It's how we use our struggles as a way to improve ourselves. Struggle is wisdom. Struggle is strength. Struggle does develop us into a better version of ourselves. Welcome and thank you for joining me on Vibe Talk. I'm your guide, Jesse Johnson. And the topic that we're going to be covering is a subject that's even personal to me. And more likely, it's also personal to you, too. Like the intro to the wisdom that I share, it's, it's about the struggles, the struggles that we all go through. You, me, family, friends, people that we wind up crossing paths with. We all ex experience struggle and we all endure it. It's something many of us face and where each of us have our own stories that we have experienced in certain situations that we have had went through and experienced and endured. Situations like losing a job, a loss of a loved one, divorce, illness, any kind of hardship it can fit any number of struggles that many of us face. The fact is, is that we can either 
let it consume us, never learning, never evolving, never to understand the wisdom we crave, never to be empathetic, never to be compassionate to others in, and even in their struggle. We never would reach the point in our life to lead others through their struggle from the wisdom that we have learned on our own. We never become a better version of ourselves or find our greater purpose if we choose to wallow or even blame others for our experience. We wind up hearing stories of personal struggles, personal struggles of others, and from that they have become, even became advocates to others who had endured the same situations. Look at victims of crimes. Sometimes even the person who was a victim of it or even those who have been family members of victims, they wind up becoming advocates. And even some have even nestled themselves into careers that have fought for change and based upon what they have experienced or even their family members have experienced, that they even change laws within the, within the government and political systems. The fact is, how can one even know what the ills are within society, within a community, within a workplace environment, unless one winds up experiencing the hardships of the struggle within any given situation. Imagine what you can achieve through the strength and even the understanding in your own personal struggle. So do me a favor, close your eyes and open your heart and open your mind for a moment and put the memories of your own struggles that you have faced in your mind and take this journey with me to understand the wisdom and the understanding of what we wind up accomplishing through the faces of our own struggles that we have experienced or even endured. So here's the facts. Our struggle is definitely an integral part of our human growth. Life do doiled and easily substituted for real strength. And many times it's laziness and procrastination that becomes even a normative in our society. I mean, I'm sure you have heard stories about children whose parents are, have guarded them against experiencing even the smallest wrinkles or adults who have set themselves in a, in a Fort Knox tower of personal delusions. The fact remains that both wind up leading to a path of entitlement, anxiety, and even paranoia. And even the existence without any real exertion, personal struggle is the way to wind up measuring successful ventures by degrees. It's not passive. It's an absolute opposite activity. It, it focuses on the uncomfortable goal that we wind up dealing with. Struggle winds up propelling the individual to wind up moving forward. The more difficulties, the greater the challenges, the more possibilities emerge for either defeat or even mastery. Which did you choose when you faced with your own struggles? Which would you choose if you were cur currently facing the struggle today? How can one wind up living or even dwelling in someone's basement one minute and then become successful entrepreneurs the next? It's because they dealt with the struggles before they even got started. These are stories that I have personally heard from successful internet gurus that I had the opportunity to meet when I was in internet marketing years back. Facing fear is definitely the essence of struggle. And since fear and anxiety wind up stunting growth, believe it or not, struggle invites a sense of empathy, compassion, and gratitude. Either one makes progress or even success. Put the work of struggle, the discipline of it, and the grow in resilience. If one wishes to project strength and gain fire, struggle is inevitable. And in fact, it is the key to success. Any internet, successful internet guru will tell you. Personal growth comes with a price tag. As most of us in humanity, no struggle is no gain. And when we take charge of our lives, those who are active not and not passive, we don't just survive, we wind up gaining tools to thrive. Fear in itself 
keeps many from personal growth. And if one sits in a cave of one's own making and waits for whatever to come and lives without the basic needs for body maintenance, death occurs. Likewise, no one should wait to act until fear passes. If you are in your own head, it never will. Growth winds up happening when courage stands tall next to fear and not in its place. Insecurity becomes shadowed by the courage needed to move. And waiting for handouts is not built in the, in the human nature. Working and giving is. If we are waiting for the world that we live in to be fair, sadly it's not. And it won't be, unfortunately. Until humanity as a society gives up on its foolishness, and unless our society as a whole winds up changing within, for now, it won't be fair. Life, your life, winds up requiring courage and action. The body that houses the mind struggles daily to maintain itself, and it is the very foundation of being alive. The brain must move past maintenance to activity and to create an atmosphere of courage, personal growth, and struggle to make one a leader in their own life. Set goals. Do the work. Muster the courage to act and take charge. Learn survival. Not every single activity will be successful. We learn and then we try again. Not every venture will yield what is wanted, but work at mastering it does. So you do it anyways. The question is, as it's one I have asked myself and many times when I have faced many different experiences of struggle, I ask myself, Jesse, do you want to be the doormat or the door? And it's a question that you should ask yourself when you're facing your own struggles. Ask anyone who's a huge success and they will tell you stories of how long their struggle lasted. The difference is, is opportunity or resilience. Deal with it. Deal with the discomfort and the fear, then continue despite it. Success is in any arena. In hindsight, it can be understand on a curve. Climbing on a mountain on the left side, many lightweighted uh, thinkers just pack it in. Successful people, they wind up getting up and use self-talk to continue up the mountain. And no matter what, they will never give up. And their attitude winds up pushing the fear and the insecurity aside. And then they continue. The darkest day will be at the heap, at the top of the heap. But it will ride down the other side. Perseverance is the difference between a thousand failed experience, experiences and one that works. You see, my personal take back was an experience that I had when I was working as a machine operator for a company. The work was grueling and at times I walked into my front door after a long day, bent over looking like a question mark due to the heavy pains in the, of my lower back. And many times I wanted to quit. The politics within the company I worked for was something that was easy to give into the thought of quitting. Yet I kept giving myself that soft, that self-talk trying to find joy with from a place that was like hell for many of us who would work there. I kept climbing up that mountain. And just before the year, my year anniversary, I ended up getting well certified and was, was beginning to see purpose of what I did based on the people that I had made connections with. And taken under the wing of men welders who believed in me, they winded up showing me all the different ropes and tricks an opening was posted and I wound up receiving the position to be a full-time weld repair welder. And management, they wound up recognizing my hard work and my contributions that I had made in the time that I was there in that company. I was approached to take a setter position rather than a weld repair position. And at first I was quite intimidated by the vast amount of responsibilities that that, that position, that particular position had held. Yet my peers had encouraged me and the many had believed in me, the very people 
that I had built connections with. So despite my own reservations, I wound up buying a, a toolbox and a bunch of tools and I wound up taking the opportunity with courage. And to me, it was another step up the mountain. It was then that I wound up facing a challenge of a supervisor who didn't want me to be his setter as he wanted a couple of his superstar operators to be in that position rather than me and that he'd even encouraged them to apply. And because that I wasn't the person that he wanted, he would constantly harass me and made it into a hostile work environment. And, in, and I was intimidated by him. The return thoughts of, of wanting to quit returned. And I tried to stand up for myself and I wound up writing a six page statement and what he did, giving it to one of my plant managers. And so he said he gave it to one of the HR rep, reps at the time. The thing is, is that nothing was done about it. And after that harsh struggle of that experience I had endured, I went to another shift as it was either that or quit. And soon after that, that change, plant managers made all setters into uh, leaders, team leaders, which became another step up the mountain. The darkest heap was at what I had endured in that challenge and that I endured before reaching that step. If it wasn't for my perseverance, I would have not reached that height. And I learned from my challenge not to treat people like I was treated and to instead treat people like I wanted to be treated by building connections with those that worked under me and believing in them and their hard work as others had believed in me. It became kind of like my downfall due to one person. And it was the very thing that had pulled me down in that slope on the other side of what that, that mountain that I had worked so hard to climb. An error and a miscalculation, and not to mention confusion of what just happened. And with the hardened blow and, and hurt beyond anything that I couldn't even understand, it would have been easy to wallow in my fear, failure without understanding what I did to fail. My company might have quit on me and to make me into someone that I was not. But most importantly, I did not quit on myself and staying true to who I am. If the company even knew who I truly was, they would have seen the situation for what it was and known that none of what was said was not, was known that none of what was said was fact. Life is not fair. And I have grown to know this and accept it for what it is and to rise above it. That was my own personal choice. Everything has a reason to happen. And what that is, perhaps we will not know until that and that reason in, in that moment, but we will know it. However, with that said, we will eventually understand the wisdom within what we wind up going through. And what we do with that, we and what we do with that is within our choices that we make from it. We can let it consume us and we can keep climbing or we can keep climbing to learn to grow to become stronger from what we have endured it's up to us and what we do you see the question is do you want personal insight creative ideas and a deepening of faith well in order to get that you have to befriend the light and the struggle is within that light. So here's some facts. The loss of outside light interferes with the brain's very function and with the production of the chemical serotonin. This adversity effect winds up affecting the mood and it can wind up stimulating the need for comfort, even eating foods that are sweet or foods that are not good for us. The action, even actions that are not good for us. We might be a little snappy or even a little moody only to just provide the comfort that we crave, but it really never fulfills us. Living in the light on the outside of the body stimulates positive chemicals that floods the brain. That's why you always see people who are go hiking or are very active and go running. They wind up having a high vibration and, and their, their moods are much positive, much more positive. 
living in the light within and the inside of us, it causes one to wind up releasing toxic relationships and situations, heightening our awareness, our vibration, and having to, the ability to move past tragedy and even labor in difficulty. You see, I had noticed a difference within myself when I didn't meditate in the sun, as it was a routine thing to do, and grounding myself and absorbing the light into my, in, into my cellular embodiment. I was much more de depleted emotionally when I didn't meditate on that routine basis. I was depleted not only emotionally, but mentally, vibrationally, and even my reality of my experience began to kick me around a bit. And I wound up eating more junk food, such as sweets, and at times I had moments of depression. I was absent of that nourishment that I needed from the outside light that winds up absorbing into our cellular embodiment. And that's how we hold the light within, is the light that we absorb from the outside and the light stays in the inside into our, in the, into our cellular biology. You see, like plants, we need the sun. Why do people get depressed in the winter? Why do you think people get depressed in the winter months? especially in Midwest states, our brains wind up reacting to what we expose it to. And it also reacts to what we neglected from. And without the light and without grounding ourselves, we become scattered in thought. We become anxious and we wind up having a brain, a brain fog that is never ending. And by the light of the sun and the grounding ourselves to the earth, it's how we wind up holding the light within ourselves and expanding our consciousness and to wind up raising our vibration. Why do you think many people within the spiritual community, they wind up encouraging people to meditate, to be still, to expand, to ground ourselves, to be able to rise our vibrations because we are like walking in tenants. We have to ground ourselves above, so below. We become, we wind up becoming connected rather than disconnected. You see, you can ask for assistance with the struggle that you're experiencing, but don't ask it to be removed. A good friend at work, her name was Chantel, and she wanted up watching my personal struggles within my own personal life. And I was getting quite kicked around. She told me, be a diamond a valuable stone that is crushed and pressurized by the earth for the coal to become a diamond. It endures an enormous amount of pressure. She looked at me and she told me to be a diamond. She spoke the truth and in her truth that deeply resonated to my soul. It's the struggle that turns us to light within. And it's then that you will perform the greatest feats even beyond your own imagination and assisting others in their time of struggle, which is what of my, which is what my dearest friend Chantel had done with me when her advice was, be a diamond. The meaning, the meaning is embedded into the struggle. Don't be a victim and don't make excuses. Grow, just grow. Recognize the process and move and then give back. The struggles that we wind up experiencing is the basis of life. Struggle is also within the fabric of our life. Nothing worthwhile and satisfactory to the fiber of existence will happen unless we engage in risk and struggle. So the question is, do you have the guts to struggle? Can we muster the, the courage to risk the darkness so that the light can be appreciated? Here is the first piece of the secret. You ready? The first piece of that secret wisdom is that it's the core of growth is from struggle that we wind up enduring and experiencing. Risk projects strength. Empathy and compassion are definitely the result. Sometimes people talk about being calm in the face of adversity. 
What you don't know is that calm is achieved after the struggle is engaged. No one is calm when they're born. All people who are born are wind up being induced to cry to clear their lungs of liquid. Struggle is an essence of birth. And it is the foundation of, the cal of calm as well. Calm is achieved by facing fear and staring it down. It is not an accidental find, but it is definitely a pur purposeful effort. Over a lifetime, we can wind up noting that struggles that we had even endured or struggles that we even had passed. Stories are told, felt, and remembered. And one important part of the struggle is to ascertain whether it is a skirmish or even a war. Some of us wind up winning small battles, but ultimately we may lose the war. Look at the long game and wind up choosing your goals that will, will help you to prevail overall, not just for a limited engagement. The secret is, is that no matter how comfortable that feeling is and the, and the experience itself, you need to allow the struggle you need to welcome it. You need to embrace it. We grow because we struggle. Any suffering without learning from it is a, is a waste of personal growth. And any struggle without growth is a, just a genuine tragedy. Even if you've learned nothing more than you would do than, than you would by you would do anything to for that experience to never happen again, guess what? you've learned a little tidbit of wisdom. Wisdom can empower us through further trials and tribulations, and it can give us strength and hope to push onward and upward through it and to achieve great things. We garner the wisdom to move on and to avoid allowing past incidents to happen again and to find hope and to do and be better individuals. You see, I have struggled with my past. I've struggled to find purpose. I've struggled with my own identity. I struggled with anger. I struggled to find the root cause in society's ills. Yet, from those struggles, I am the person I am today because of it. A leader and a pacifist. Someone who loves everyone and often sees the reflection of myself in each person that I meet. The struggles that I have endured have helped me lead others to alleviate others and to help others to be a better version of themselves. And in turn, it has helped me to be a better version of myself and to get through those struggles that I face and to move forward. And like a bright, bright beacon, we can be the light to the world around us and to those who cross our paths. Or like those who have not learned anything from their struggles and who has allowed it to consume them, they can wind up being the shadow to others. And because that they had allowed the struggles to consume them, they wind up being negative and they wind up creating drama, unnecessary drama or havoc into other people's lives because they want to reflect that pain that they have felt within themselves. You see, through my own experiences, we need to reflect on the lessons that we have learned so that others who are stuck within their struggles that they have to face, that we can teach them how to get through it because we've been through it. And sometimes after we go for so long without any struggles, we wind up finding ourselves in a, in a situation where we're back in that struggle, but it gets better and better because of the things that we have learned in the past. Does it always happen where others are receptive to what wisdom you wind up teaching? No. But encourage people anyway. Don't let that deter you from giving them a little bit of piece of advice that may help them. And to celebrate those that have taken their first steps in the right direction. You see, wisdom... It definitely doesn't come with age. 
as I have met those who are in their 40s, 50s, and up, they have not achieved wisdom through their own struggles. And instead, they have chose to become that shadow to others and reflect in their own pain that continues on a loop to others. Wisdom comes from our own struggles, and wisdom comes from struggle and adversity and learned experiences, which alters our perception and, to change, and it changes all of us in a most profound way. Wisdom is growth. Wisdom is courage. Wisdom is experienced. It is the struggles that we experience that becomes our greatest teacher. Learn from everything, whether that's good or bad. And even at the darkest times in one's life, it does become a gift. Allow me to tell you, one of my past experiences, as you can see, I have what looks like a lazy eye. Well, this is how it happened. When I was about 19, 20, I was hanging out with this girl. And I was young and naive. I didn't know what drugs was. She was on drugs and plus she was drunk. I only thought she was drunk. So I tried to stop her from wandering around the streets of Flint being drunk. Because if anyone knows anything about Flint, Michigan... It is definitely not the place to go wandering around drunk. And I didn't want to see her get hurt. So I tried to stop her. She winded up going into the kitchen and getting and said she was going to get a bowl of cereal. She goes into the kitchen and she comes back and she stands at the corridor between the kitchen and the living room. I was sitting on the couch eating one of those colored Easter eggs as it happened on Easter. And as she walked by me, she threw the contents of what was in that butter bowl into my face, which was bleach. It went up my, up my nose, down my throat, in my eyes. My eyes were burning out of my head. I couldn't breathe. And I went to go reach forward thinking she was in front of me. And instead she was in back of me. And to an addition to what she already did, she slapped me in the back of the head with a plate. that ended up breaking upon contact. I winded up getting going to the hospital and they had to strap me, strap me down to the gurney and knock me out because I was just thrashing all over the place. And I was there at the hospital for three days. And I was blind for three and a half, four months. The only reason what saved me from being blind, and it was the one day that I, I it was the one moment that I prayed because I didn't want to be blind. And what saved me? It, was it a miracle? Yeah, absolutely in every way. But what saved me is because of the scar tissue did not go to the central axis of the cornea. It didn't blind me. Does my sight disintegrate being that I get older? Yeah. But I can still see. What that moment had taught me was that at the time, I was not making the best choices. I was young. And uh, I wasn't making the best choices. But during that moment, when I was blind and I couldn't see nothing, it had me evaluate a lot of things in my life. I ended up moving out of state. Once I started to regain my, my sight after going to specialists and getting eye drops that were extremely painful to put in my eyes and slept about 20 hours a day. And after that time when I got my sight back, I mean, I was so happy that even a paperclip had entertained me. I was so grateful. I moved out of state and I got my life together. I wanted up getting into nursing and uh, put my through myself through school and everything else. It was that moment of that struggle that changed me. And no matter how hard that struggle is, there is always something 
grandest to learn from it. And no matter what, whether it's losing a close relative or anything, there is always something to learn. The thing is, is that struggle creates wisdom. And if you, depending on the choices of how you react to that struggle, it can make you into the best, better version of yourself. And you wind up achieving feats that even is beyond your own imagination. I've done it many times before. So it's definitely possible. I would like to thank you for joining me on this journey and this lesson. Sorry that this video is a little long, but there's a lot to say about the wisdom behind the struggle. Make sure that you press the subscribe button and become a subscriber. And uh, we're going to, this is not going to be, um, I know I haven't done a video in a while, but this is going to be plenty more that's going to be coming as I love teaching. So do me a favor. If it's not too personal, put down your struggles that you have learned and what you have experienced and, and share because you might be helping somebody who may run across this video and be looking at the comments and your wisdom of what you have experienced and what you have learned from it may help someone else. You have a blessed day and samsara. Come back and see me and we'll be definitely learning a new lesson. Blessings.